Wellness is at the core of the philosophy which isn't just dealing with the physical plane. The wellness of the mental, physical, astral, emotional, and energetic planes is the ultimate goal and emotional responsibility is the jelly in the jelly donut, which is probably not something you want to eat for wellness on the physical plane, but you get the idea. It's pretty important. Just like this episode. Today, we are taking another angle on the pillar known as emotional responsibility and accountability. So let's journey. Wise, wise. With Aaron and Alexander. Uncovering our authentic self through self awareness, conscious communication, and emotional responsibility. So, Alexander, one issue that I've found when trying to talk to people about this work and explain what it is and even t- uh, discussing the tools that, that we utilize, the human design and the destiny cards and, and essentially so- astrology, is uh, making it clear what these, wh- how I use these things or how we use these things in the work. Because I, I think maybe it's, it's me not clarifying my language and, and how they can understand it, but I feel sometimes that uh, the way it comes off when I'm trying to explain it is that this explains how I'm, I was created as like a default setting. So mm-hmm. like, you know, in general terms as a airy sun sign, there are some attributes that are, that are kind of assigned to that or, or can be seen sure. uh, overall. Or so, through the human design yeah. or the destiny card system. So when I, when I identify or, or see those things in my makeup, it helps to clarify how I felt my entire life in certain situations. So it helps me identify that it's not just some random like behavioral thing that I've picked up, that it is something that, uh, that is in my makeup and something I have to either work with or adjust or, or uh, redefine in some or ways. Or continue retrain. to struggle with. As yeah, many people exactly. Do. They exactly. fight who they are. And of course, you know, some people may think that some of these are, 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 uh, valuable things to them, um, or at- valuable attributes, or uh, self-destructive attributes. Sure. Um, you know, when we go in and explain the human design, when we talk about the centers being activated, non-activated, people immediately seem that, that the non-activated ones are like negative traits. But, yeah, but I think there's judgment. Pro- yeah, I think there's pros and cons. It's just different. It how is we experience. different, and and that's one of the you know one of the main things of this particular segment that I really wanted to get across is that any of these tools that you use, whether it's tools that, that we talk about on this show, the human design, the destiny card system, um, other forms of astrology or numerology, um, or whatever it is, if it's just as hindering to allow yourself to be defined by these systems as it is to not be interested in the systems at all. Um, From my perspective and what I promote in this philosophy is that you're just using this for a map, Um, but the map does not limit you. Uh, It should help you to see your path more clearly, but it's still important that you pave your own path, so to say and not be this just uh, habitual or the default setting um, follower, uh, per se. So some people get caught up in following the masses or the media through fear or following what their schools teach, what their government, you know, uh, shares with them. And once again, there is nothing uh, wrong with any of these paths. It's just different paths that people choose, and they all have to be here going on simultaneously. So whether you're going along with uh, everything in our so-called culture or society, or whether you're um, bucking the system and trying to just be your own individual self, 
this is the work that uh, that we share here is how to truly become that authentic self. And through that is breaking that shackles of what the so-called system has molded you to uh, believe or a way to see life. But then the obstacle of truly finding your individual voice, your individual purpose, all of that is quite a challenge, um, but it is a logistical challenge. And we're here to demystify that idea of finding your life's purpose and that type of thing, uh, doing it through a example and uh, be through other people's works, um, supporting systems and tools, uh, and then it, adapting this philosophy in a way into our lives that where we see benefit and growth in every area of our life, especially relationships, uh, including relating with ourselves. So when we point out a certain aspect about someone, say through their human design system, it's the responsibility, and I'm going to tie this into one of the pillars. We haven't talked about the pillars in quite a while, but they are the foundation of this work. And one of the pillars is, uh, you know, emotional accountability and emotional responsibility. And so once you know something about yourself, then it's your responsibility to manage that where other people are involved, not to give you the so-called right to make a stand that, hey, this is who I am and this proves it and I'm not going to change. That's not what I or we are suggesting at all. We want to use all of the tools to show us our strengths and our weaknesses. And in that being revealed, we want to be able to set our strengths to the side and work on those weaknesses. We can always pull on those strengths. It's not like we're going to forget them. Um, but we hopefully we will want to continue to grow and expand. So this tool is to help us to show what to kind of set to the side and what to bring up to the front uh, to work on simultaneously. It does not give an excuse uh, for someone to uh, limit themselves, especially where other people are concerned, and say, this is just who I am or the way that I am. Yeah, and that's that's how I think people take it. Because I often find myself, you know, whoever I'm around, pointing out things like realizations that sometimes I say, you know, just have them in my head. But oftentimes I, I'll just say it out loud if I, in a conversation like, oh, I saw how this person was reacting. And so uh, maybe that's a trait of a generator, whether I know that or not about them. And to me, just I'm just having that realization and then I can understand how they interact with the world and then almost have some compassion for them. So sure. if I realize or I see some traits of a manifester, then I, I immediately have compassion for them because I know the struggle that... Yeah, there's a high side and a, and a call. Exactly. I like to yeah. call it a call. So, so no one way um, or type is better than the other. It all equals out in the wash, so to say. And, and one of the other big points of, of this uh, podcast is to point out our true individuality and how important we really are to one another and how uh, why it's been said when two or more are gathered. The, the true power and the, the physics behind that is that when these energies come together and you're able to understand them, and that's being, you know, each individual carries an individual energetic blueprint and uh, we're able to show this on a screen and can actually show how uh, one person is affecting two different people two completely different ways and so we're constantly influencing each other energetically as soon as we get within five feet uh, minimum of each other and this is becoming more and more accepted in general public um, because there is something about that when you just don't like someone's vibe or you just don't get a good feeling or you do get a good vibe or a good feeling, so to say. That's energetic that's being picked up. And most everyone has had an experience or two of that. And just some people have learned to hone that skill. And so once again, that's to demystify this idea of airy fairy subtle energy is a very real um you know part of our lives 
that's becoming more and more important in our everyday well-being. And that's what we're helping to point out and to share in our time together here in this podcast. And for the people who are listening to this and may not subscribe to uh, astrology or things like that, I kind of liken it to a physical trait. You know, we have physical traits. I'm like medium height or whatever. Uh, But so like my height, I have to live with, you know, throughout my life. I can't really change it, but I can do things to to um, make myself taller in certain situations Mm -hmm. or or shorter. I can get on my knees and crawl around. Um, But I have to work with what I was given. Yeah, I see the analogy that you're going for because, say, for instance, that you are very interested in being an athlete. Um, One person could view, you know, your frame as probably 5'10 or 5'11. Is that correct? Womp womp. (laughs) 5'8. Okay, 5'8. Okay, I was was being kind. No, no, so 5'8, you know, most people would see that on a shorter scale, especially in uh, sports. But... As we see, there are certain athletes that they make that their, uh, you know, their trait, their, the one thing that they have over everybody, whether it's speed or whether it's jumping ability. So one can see those limitations, those physical limitations as obstacles or opportunities. But I do agree that the energetic um, blueprint, so to say, is very similar to that. You're given certain parameters and certain uh, limitations within your ignorance. So just like with your physical limitation of height at 5'8", that doesn't have to limit your ability to jump, where normally it's just a general understanding that taller people can jump higher. That's not always the case because there are things that you can do to your physical body to uh, overcome that so-called physical limitation. Well, in energetics, is very similar. There are things that we can learn to do, and most of it is just learning to harness and hold our energy while allowing it to flow. And most of us have energetic blockages, and then we uh, drain our energy constantly, whether it's through worry or fear or negative emotions or putting ourselves around so-called negative people or negative situations. Some people's jobs are just so demanding and so heavy. And that's why I like to suggest to most people to, you know, consider job changes every seven years, at least department changes to get away from the same thing because it becomes very deteriorating over over seven years. And I would like to see our workforce work toward that to be able to have a rotation um, of job um, skills in seven years, but still be able to supply a security, job security for people. So we have in our energy field, we have, you know, the ability to learn to hone into these um, extra senses, so to say, and expand our ability similar to that jumping ability through exercise and lifting weights and that type of thing. So as we continue to expand our discussions on subtle energy, we are looking to bring it down to a very uh, grounded level of communication. And, um, you know, anybody that wants to step into just uh, what I'm really talking about, what I like to suggest is for you to cup your hands one over the other and to just sit there and hold them still and get them as close as you can together without them touching and then just hold them. And normally within a matter of seconds or certainly minutes, you'll start to feel heat starting to move. And my right arm just jumped as I did that. And what you're doing is you're generating energy here. And then you can actually lock in on it and pull your hands away and feel the ball of energy expand and contract it. Once again, this isn't magic. (laughs) This is just... Slowing the mind down again enough to feel the warmth in your hands and then to be able to see that through goggles of frequency, basically, and to understand that those are frequencies by bouncing around in there, similar to a microwave, creating heat. And as we expand our hands, the heat can start to dissipate. So this is, you know, worked with in many different oriental exercises and practices as well. And uh, we won't necessarily get into that deep of on that subject in this show uh, at this particular point in time, but we may expand in that way in the future. 
So now understanding that when we learn about ourselves, it is setting up a new level of responsibility. So I have a saying that I like to utilize that if you think that you know more than someone else in the room, then congratulations, you carry more responsibility. So it is fine for us to feel like we or uh, carry more understanding in a certain subject um, or area of life than someone else. That doesn't have to be taken to the extreme as being from the ego. But the responsibility I just asked to come with that is that you carry the compassion, you carry the patience, you carry the ability to snuff out the frustration in the conversation um, because your intention should be to communicate. The one that knows more should want to communicate that. And to understand that sometimes learning is hard and um, most people are embarrassed to show that they are ignorant at certain subjects. So we have all these defense mechanisms we have to jump through. So as we're learning these things about ourselves and our energy makeup, our personalities, our relationships, you know, for instance, I happen to be a generator and with generators, I happen to know that we know what we don't like better than what we do like. So I'm very aware of that, and I've uh, entertained many people with many different analogies of this working out, like somebody asking me if I wanted to get something to eat, and I haven't really thought about it, and they start naming off things, and I just want to shoot them down one after the other because I'm designed to know what I want when it's coming at me to learn to respond to life. And that's where generators really thrive and manifesting generators is learning to truly respond to life rather than react. And that's why getting these emotions um, managed is so important so that we can separate that responding and reacting. And so with this pillar, bringing it back in again of emotional accountability and responsibility, that means that if I get in a discussion with someone and I catch myself shooting two of their first their first two ideas down, then I take that as my responsibility that they could misconstrue and not understand what I'm doing and not understand my process. So I maybe should consider either informing them of what's going on or strongly consider agreeing with the next thing that's offered because they're going above and beyond and giving me multiple options And so that's just a social decision in the situation, but it's not necessarily fair for everybody that I come in contact with for me to just expect them to shoot off uh, suggestions and just allow me to shoot all their suggestions down because sometimes I have to hear uh, 10 or 12 suggestions to get to the one that I want. And most people are going to have rejection issues. They're going to take that as rejection. So see, there's so many generators out there that are unconsciously doing their process and they get uh, judged, they get ridiculed for being pessimistic, for, for, you know, letting the air out of everyone's little party balloons and that type of thing, when really they're just doing their process. And I know that you know a little bit about this being a generator yourself. Yes, and I I did want to just take a jump back and have you clarify your definitions in this um, example of responding versus reacting. I figured you'd bring that back around. (laughs) Okay, so understand that we have brought um, in the past with the pillars as well the battle between polarity and duality. So the basic difference between those two is duality deals with resistance and polarity deals with acceptance that there has to be a positive and negative charge for anything to live on this plane. That's just a fact of physics. But it becomes duality when we resist or or want that to be different and there to only be love on this planet or only be positivity and that type of thing, and that's what creates wars. So with responding and reacting, responding is being... Carrying that understanding of polarity, choosing to not carry very much of a preference to any situation, and being able to adapt, that is responding to life. That you have a general idea of the direction that you're going, but you're allowing 
the map to show you the roads to get on. And once again, this is bringing in back in what we've discussed recently about intention, the difference between intention and expectation. These all fall together beautifully. But when we are in reaction, that's something that's normally been instilled in us at another time of our life. And so if someone says something that elicits some fear in us and we react, then we're not able to respond clearly. We're not able to respond non-attached. We're not able to respond for the highest good of everyone involved. What we're doing is we're reacting in defense. And could you also tie that in and say when we're reacting, we're not responding like logically, taking everything into consideration because a reaction is kind of a... Fight or flight. Yeah, we feel something weird, so we're just going to blurt out. Yeah, normally it is selfish, even if... The reaction is in protection of somebody else. Anytime a reaction is happening, all of the information needed is not being included. Um, That's where responding is different. Responding doesn't react so that it can respond to all the information that's going on simultaneously. All of the sounds that's happening, everything that's being seen, all of the smells, the feeling, the inner sense of, of uh, feeling or intuition, that all of that can happen. And al- almost everyone has an experience that they can recall where they have maybe experienced something with all of that that they couldn't really explain to anybody. And sometimes it's it comes out uh, when people are going to be in automobile accidents. And I've heard people talk about everything slowing down and going into slow motion. That is responding to that moment is that time doesn't seem to exist and everything happens just like it needs to happen. And the purpose of this work is to uh, train us to open up our conscious mind instead of operating so much of our, out of our subconscious so that we can harness some of these energies to just be in that state uh, more accurately for longer periods of time. Uh, whether you want to call that in a conscious state, an enlightened state, a more aware state, I don't really care the terminology, but uh, in the present moment, there's many ways that it's been said, but it seems that very few people truly understand what that really means. And that does mean that you're not in reaction. You're not carrying all these preferences. You are responding to life. And in that response, there is nothing negative. Uh, That's negative in the way of uh, bad, so to say, Um, in that there's no judgment. Because in polarity, the negative isn't worse than the positive. They're both equally needed uh, for both things to happen, uh, to create something. So I think that's important to look to be in response rather than reaction to look to use intention rather than expectation and to understand that, you know, anytime you're experiencing frustration or any of these negative emotions, you are not responding, you are reacting. And anytime we're reacting, we are not seeing or experiencing that clearly. That's another fact. Because the emotions cloud our vision, clouds our smell, clouds our sense of feeling. It clouds everything. So that's why uh, many uh, great teachers of the past from many different lineages, you know, have taught that there's nothing to fear, uh, even death. Um, There's nothing bad, so to say. Everything that we experience is necessary on this plane or it wouldn't exist. Now, once again, that does not mean I'm an advocate of everything that happens. That just means I have to accept it. And acceptance is not condoning. And then we have uh, the ability to use these tools that we're discussing to be able to choose the roles that we're in, to choose more clearly the situations that life brings us, and to prepare for those that we can't uh, know what is going to happen. So this is just about bringing more awareness into our life, uh, more awareness into what our relationships are here to teach us, And it's important to look at that emotional responsibility and accountability is that once you 
get the confirmation of something that is in your blueprint, it doesn't give you the excuse to continue operating in that way all the time. It gives you the ability to be able to, one, communicate it, and B, or two, to work on uh, strengthening a weak side of that and setting the strength side of that to the side. Um, So part of uh, that responding is learning to get to that response you're looking for instead of after 10 suggestions to maybe get it down to three. And that's what doing the work will do. It will shorten your time span of having to keep shooting ideas down because you're you're looking for the um, solution faster because when you hold that intention and when you work towards that, energy builds over time. And it shortens the length of these lessons that we need to go through. So let's go back to an experience that we both had this past weekend. And I think we ultimately handled it differently. And this also, you know, this applies to the emotional accountability and responsibility. So we both were in situations where things outside of our control were kind of invited in and our uh, timelines that we uh, had a preference of uh, got stretched out when, when, you know, we were obviously doing different things. But I don't know if you want to share your example and uh, we can discuss how you handled it better than I did. Because in mine, I had friends over during the weekend and I was just busy the entire time and some things took longer in time than I thought and I didn't get enough time for myself and to be still and silent and after three days of that I'm just emotionally exhausted yeah and you know it wasn't from anything negative no that you experienced uh, that and that's the thing that I think I'm so uh, thankful that you brought this up because that's important to realize that draining your energy isn't necessarily always connected to negativity And uh, that's why I say all the emotions are equal. If you're being emotional, even if you're excited, you're still draining your energy just like similarly to if you were worried. So in this situation, you happen to be having a great time. But, yes, some things got uh, piled on you that you really weren't planning on that stretched some time frames. And then you really paid the cost for it yesterday and today. And um, so once again, there's no complaining going here. It's just seeing that. Moving forward, uh, we discussed a little bit earlier before the podcast just kind of some strategies of how to approach that. And the suggestion was just, uh, you know, setting boundaries earlier and differently. And would you like to expand of how you see it now? Yeah, I think being open and verbalizing kind of your boundaries, you know, if, if like me, when you had guests over and uh, we have certain timelines to do things in or certain timelines that you would like to do things in. Kind of let them know kind of how you want your structure to be. And mm-hmm. because when you don't inform, then it it's falls, not, you know, yeah, falls it can't on be you. their fault. And yeah. you can't, yeah, you can't be angry. But as a, we talked about as a generator, we get, I don't know if it's our theme in the human design, but we get frustrated when time gets pushed, when we don't have enough time or we look back, uh, this happens a lot with me where I have a weird expectation of time. And when I'm at a point in the day where I look back and I'm like, man, I wanted to get so much done today, but it's already like 5 p.m. and I'm halfway through, I can feel frustration come in. Yeah, yeah, and and that's what I had to break down frustration to be is just basically that, pushing time which is impossible. It helped me to learn to deal with it because this happened to be one of my biggest healing hurdles when I went through my um, my crash after my wife passed of cancer. And uh, it took me five years to figure out that frustration was what um, was making my chest hurt excruciatingly bad every day of my life for five years. And then I began to dismantle that over time. And um, So that's what we ultimately want to get to is helping people to release these pent up emotions. And everything we talk on this uh, podcast is uh, tools to help to do that. But it is a much bigger picture than we can get in uh, in these first 25 episodes. We still got a lot to 
to cover and to expand on um, how all of this fits together. But this is about, you know, uh, overall wellness in, in every area and understanding that we do have five different levels. Uh, when healing is mentioned, there's five different levels of the body. You have the physical body, the mental body, the emotional body, the energetic body, and the astral body. So all of these different levels have different tools that uh, work better than others on those different levels. And light and color work on different levels uh, better than sound does. And, and physical manipulation works, of course, on the physical level. So I think science, of course, is just starting to see the combination. They truly don't understand uh, the whole concept yet, but seeing that all these things are starting to be connected. We're seeing more and more of of just what the the term they call stress now is becoming an understanding that it creates mental problems and that it creates physical problems uh, like heart attacks and physical issues like that. So they're they're starting to open up the door, but they're at the very infancy of it. Um, but we are at least getting to see that. So optimal healing is working on all five of these levels all simultaneously, and that's what this work um, you know gets us to have a wider. Uh, understanding of all those different levels uh, kind of simultaneously to assist us uh, to do that. Do you want to go back to uh, your experience this weekend and and let us know like how you handled it other than me because I just I just kind of went with it and then took the fall yeah, at the end. Yes, no, uh, certainly. So um, so I do enjoy um, playing disc golf and throwing a frisbee in a little basket and getting a good amount of walking in. And so um, so I have a friend of mine that I do this normally with at least twice a week, and Aaron and I do this together as well as as well with this other friend. And so uh, Aaron wasn't able to join us this past Sunday, and I had a nephew and a couple of his friends come in to play this um, new nice course that we had found. And so it was going to be five of us, and typically uh, Shanton and I are used to playing um, by ourselves or with Aaron, maybe one other person. So we're used to moving pretty quickly through the course. But at this particular course, there's never anyone behind us. There's never anyone in front of us. So there's no real resistance. And we were going into our second game, and um, it had taken us almost two hours to play a game, which is about twice as long as I'm used to. And as we get to the second hole of the park, uh, there happens to be a young gentleman there, maybe in his 30s, with his, I would guess, 10 to 12-year-old son, and or he called him his son. And uh, But the, the kid was really into disc golf. He had probably over 30 discs, and um, uh, they had a big radio blaring. So they were kind of in a different mental frame than we were. Uh, we were just very um, loose and just uh, really enjoying being together. I hadn't seen my nephew in quite a while. And so anyway, anytime there's a kid uh, around, then more responsibility certainly comes in. And so so they asked if they could join us. Well, right away, I, I felt that affect uh, my whole group. And one of my friends did speak up and say, well, as long as it doesn't slow us down any like that. And um, I didn't feel inclined to deny them. The the little boy, there was no reason that I could really come up that I felt like would be good enough. And so there didn't seem to be an issue. So we invited them to come play with us. Well, my other friend happens to be a generator, similar to me. And I could just see that that set in on him possibly even heavier than he realized at the time. But any time a generator is in a situation where they are not pleased with the environment, they're really designed to be able to remove themselves from that environment um, quickly. And so it's harder for a generator to just make the best of a situation than any other type. That, once again, doesn't excuse them, doesn't give them an excuse to cause a scene or anything like that. It just brings more awareness towards that. As soon as I we invited them into play, I adjusted my frequency, so to say. I accepted that this was going to take us longer. Uh, the kid was a big talker. He talked almost constantly. 
And uh, so over a long period of time, of many years, I've worked on these things to not frustrate me because I've really been through life in some things in life that were really frustrating, like, you know, people um, depending on you for their, their life or their existence and uh, walking people through their death. So so this was a little bit easier for me to learn to let go of these little things, but I could continue to see my friends struggle with letting that go. And so he started getting um, kind of short and snippy with his answers, and he wanted to, like, push the pace that we were walking. And we so we all made it through and had a good time, and there wasn't any negativity. But part of that I feel like that was helpful was that you know, that was being seen, it was being recognized, and I was working with my energy to buffer that and making sure that he knew that he had somebody that was helping him push the tempo. And so I worked with him in that because he was the only one that was carrying any really negative energy or potential negative, and I understood it. So I stepped in. Hopefully I was helpful. We all had a really good time and um, and finished the day after uh, two rounds. When they asked, did you have a, any sort of gut reaction? Uh, yeah. I mean, right away it was a no, um, you know, which I'm, I'm designed to pay attention to my gut, but to wait out the emotional roller coaster ride, so to say. So typically I suggest people with my design to, you know, wait 24 hours to make a change or make a decision. And that's why – generators can carry frustration so much is because once something starts to bug them if they can't make an adjustment then it just continues to escalate and so fortunately like i've said life has uh, has trained me enough or taught me enough that i was able to let that go and continue to just enjoy the day and the time and it wound up taking us you know twice as long to play two rounds as it normally does um But it was the most beautiful day, and it was incredible, and we did have a good time. Um, But it didn't drain my energy uh, that the gentleman that was a little bothered uh, didn't allow it to get to any point to dampen anyone else's uh, mood. And that was all through, you know, acceptance. And if you can't change the the makeup of the situation, you just— kind of I call it check a box and go okay at this point moving forward I see that I've got to set a different time frame because I could either just got taken advantage of or just got expanded on the offer that I agreed to and now it's turned into something more and many times this happens out of innocence and sometimes it happens out of manipulation but the way to not have to get into judging which one it is is just to learn to manage your time and communicate uh, that with people a little bit more clearly. And I think that's what we discussed, um, you know, in your situation. And earlier in our conversation, you gave me uh, excellent examples on how I could establish my emotional boundaries uh, more so that I wouldn't feel depleted at the end of a long weekend, whether it was a fun weekend with friends I haven't seen in a year or, you know, something negative happened. Right, right. And so you did give me a few examples on how it, on how to do that, and I maybe they were geared more towards generators, but I wanted you to bring those back up because whether you're a generator out there or not, I feel it is important for people to understand that it is healthy to establish boundaries within their lives. And even though some of them are not, are not looked upon in social situations as like you being fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are important for your emotional body and uh, your emotional accountability and responsibility as a person doing this work. Sure. Yeah. And once again, everyone is different where this is concerned and some people uh, feed on, you know, other people being around and some people are just drained literally by people just being around. So it's not always the the event. It's not always, you know, something personal with the person. Sometimes it can be uh, described as, you know, uh, they're emotionally draining or they're just mentally exhausting, something like that. And those terms are used, but not always is there a verbal explanation. So there are certain things that I like to just suggest for people to try and see what tool fits for them. And one thing is learning to 
set time boundaries on all social engagements, even family things. And what we have to do is we have to go through a stage of disappointment to retrain people uh, what we're willing to uh, to be able to do. And right now, everyone is overextended because the expectations are unrealistic in our culture between family responsibilities and relationship responsibilities and social responsibilities. It just winds up being, you know, too much for most people, and they're trying to do it all. So I find that, you know, any anywhere where you do have the ability to manage your environment, and some for some people that's outside of work, uh, you set these certain uh, time parameters. Uh, for me, it happens to be just a default of about two hours. I don't care if I'm having the best time in the world or – uh, not really enjoying it that much. Uh, normally at about two hours, I'm ready to change my environment because I typically really enjoy stillness and calmness. And uh, the best thing that anyone can do for me, I don't need to be entertained. I just did not need to not be bothered. And that's a true friend for me. So, so when I go to these situations, like I said, I'll give the opportunity for the person to stay longer if they want to. Another way is to, uh, you know, inform and educate people of these of certain boundaries as soon as you meet them. If they are food boundaries, if they are social boundaries, if they're work boundaries, whatever they are, the earlier that you can get them established, the less likely for you to be uh, tempted to be influenced or to change your way of looking at it. And we all do have the right to set these kinds of boundaries. And even if that's something that is like limiting with food, you can you can use a response like even if you are a vegetarian, uh, it still helps to not be judgmental of other people that aren't vegetarians. And when you inform that, that you let that be known, that that I happen to choose to not eat meat, but I don't expect anyone to change their diet around me. Now, some people are going to be very hardcore, and they're doing it for certain reasons that they don't want to be around uh, meat products and that type of thing. And once again, there's no judgment there, but I'm not talking to anyone in any extremes. I'm not judging those extremes either. But finding these little ways to set, uh, whether it's time boundaries or it's... um, you know, the level of depth that you're willing to go into the conversations, uh, the vulnerability uh, boundaries, the mental boundaries even, because some people can talk about mental concepts and just, you know, wear someone else out that's just receiving that. So understand that it's always easier to set it up in the beginning than it is to alter it in midstream. And most people try to alter it in midstream or they just endure it, and then they get frustrated, they get tired, and then what happens is they don't do anything to the person or the situation. They bring it home to their loved ones. The loved one, whether it be the child or the husband or the wife or whomever it is, might say or do something to set them off, and they're taking out all the frustration from the event that they just came from. So we need to remember to you know, not hurt the ones that we love the most, um, to, to love them the most. And this is why emotional processing and release is, is so important. Could you remember any specific um, point that I brought up that you wanted to make sure got highlighted from our earlier conversation? No, I, I mean, you covered it. It was definitely about uh, setting realistic boundaries with yourself before going out. And yes. then, and then uh, implementing alert, or uh, yeah, and oh. then alerting the person up front because I think that that solves uh, many of the of the issues. And then yeah, because uh, it's like for instance, sorry to cut you off, but for instance, with many manifesting generators, they are the yes people. So as soon as something is suggested, they want to say yes, and that's their pure intention at that time. But then normally what I see inevitably happens is as the event starts to draw closer, this person wishes that they hadn't said yes. Lots of times they will go ahead and go through it and endure that. And once again, it weighs on them. Uh, Some people will cancel. And the part of the mature part of that is to learn to be able to inform of something like that sounds great. I would love to participate. Can I give you an answer in a few days? And you know, if they need to know right then, 
just I'm not making the suge- suggestion across the board. But for me, typically, anytime somebody brings any kind of angst to me, the answer is no. I want any opportunity or anybody that I'm working with to always be in a comfortable state. If they're in a, a, a state of anxiety, then I have to understand that energetically, if I'm around that, it's going to be passed to me. So, see, the more that somebody tries to talk me into something, typically they have no idea. They're just talking me more and more out of it because obviously now I don't want to be around you or that situation because of what it's creating here in this situation. So, follow your gut. Many of you out there know right away whether something is right or wrong for you. And then some of you are, are designed, such as myself, to feel that gut response but to wait 24 hours is called uh, letting the emotional wave pass you know and then um, some people are designed uh, to wait 29 whole days really uh, because they're being so affected by everyone they come in contact with so this just helps to clear out empathic natures piece of people that are empathic and they do uh, both both for it's useful for people that know that they pick up other people's energy or emotions and this can help describe what's exactly going on and then for anybody that doesn't feel like that really exists um, then you know this information may not be for you but everybody is actually uh, in the real world of physics sharing energy almost constantly Uh, so this doesn't have to be a negative thing once again it can be learned uh, to be very utilized and for um, partnerships and teams in the future and even relationships, uh, how to grow and to benefit each other uh, for the highest good truly of everyone involved. And in situations where you you start implementing this and maybe maybe this is new for you, so you're, you're trying with people that may not understand the work, may not be doing the work, how do you handle any judgment that comes at you after trying this out you know maybe somebody will say you're too controlling with your time or you know come on lighten up have have some fun like how do you handle that well i think uh you know once again this comes back to what we talked about in the last couple of podcasts about uh, knowing who you are and sticking your stake in the ground uh because way showers of any direction normally go through judgment but the thing is is that you're not doing this to make a stand what you're doing is you're just being the example And the example is, um, okay, I'm not feeling harmonious about this. I want to stay loving. I don't want to take any negative energies back to my loved ones. So this is a good time for me to cut out. Now, if you set that precedence to, say, be two hours going to a social engagement and you get two hours in and then you're having surprisingly a really good time and it's not draining at all, great conversations, then you always have the freedom to expand that time. Uh, the problem is normally is going backwards to shorten stuff. Uh, people normally see it as, you know, a gift when you're able to expand. So you will have to typically go through some resistance of, uh, you know, people wanting what they want. But the truth is, is that anyone that truly loves you wants for you what you want. And, um, that that's normally revealed in these social situations. So I have uh, been told, called the party pooper. I've been called, uh, you know, many judgmental things in jest um, when leaving things. And typically I just like to create little mantras to use or little groups of words to consistently use um, because it helps people learn to just say, you know, well, I'm just, um, you know, giving a good example of how to really be in a good time and to know when you've absorbed all the goodness that you can and anything extra may be misinterpreted. So I think it's good to see that to teach people that it's not about time duration, about how good something is. It's uh, it's about the truly the ability to be able to be in it when it's there and not have the need to extend it. And that's what most people, they don't know how to to really experience it, so they're so busy trying to extend it. And normally the extenders uh, and I, so to say, aren't just on the same vibration. And so I stick to my guns typically and communicate all of that ahead of time. Uh, But in the beginning it can be very awkward, 
But if you communicate and educate everyone around you that you're really looking to grow yourself and to be the optimal person that you can be and that all these changes are to support that, uh, not anything personal, uh, then, you know, your actions, if they're still judged after that, then the fact of the matter is, is that a judgmental person is going to judge no matter how straight of a line you walk. So you have to learn to accept that judgment comes with, once again, the way showers are doing something different. But the amazing thing is that once you start setting that example and being that example, then you will change people's lives around you in a uh, passive way even. And that's what we need in this day and time is more examples uh, and less uh, teachers and writers and um, you know people holding workshops, but more examples. Yeah, and and in um, in situations, people may not resonate with it that you're sharing the work with, and and I like to constantly remind myself that these people uh, may have their own philosophy, and and this philosophy is about the wellness of yourself or the individual, and I I need to keep reminding myself that because it may not be for everybody. Everybody may not be sure. into w- the wellness of themselves. Yeah, because some people are goal oriented. Yeah. So. They're not necessarily going to resonate with a whole lot of this particular uh, philosophy because this is this philosophy isn't will oriented. It is about the balance of will and trust. It's really about the balance or the equilibrium of the masculine, the feminine of of recognizing the so-called negative, but not seeing it as bad, um, being appreciative of it. And in my sound work, I say that, you know, dissonance is as important as harmony. But we've been force-fed harmony so much that we judge dissonance. And I see this in my live performance that somebody will hear a sound that they're not used to, and they'll say it makes them feel uncomfortable. And it's just because they're not used to it. Uh, And that comes from what they've been fed. But uh, in the real world of sound healing, dissonance is just as important as harmony. And we need both. Dissonance breaks up the energy and harmony settles it back down. So this is the way that we approach um, just about every situation, you know, under this philosophy is that all things are needed um, and all things have a useful side and a not useful side. um, uh, But none of the sides need to be judged. Uh, And through understanding and education and compassion and acceptance, I do feel that as human beings, we can have an experience here on this life that that is uh, beyond what we've really conceived, and that is bringing these subtle energies into alignment uh, with our soul purpose and our physical bodies and our how we use our mental bodies or our thoughts, you know, and then how we see our connection to all of this, and that is working on all of these levels simultaneously while understanding that you know, love may be the only feeling and everything else is emotions. Um, and that in order to have that experience of true unconditional love and truly being in the present moment means that you, you're not emotionless. It means you've learned to manage and put all of these emotions in their place and make your peace with them and not be run, ran by them or controlled by them. And this gets back to being able to respond rather than react. We appreciate your interest in self-growth, conscious communication, and continuing to ask the wise wise. And remember, gradual changes over long periods of time equals lasting results. The information in this podcast has been developed over 20 years by Alexander in his observation of his personal life, private practice, and professional environments. This information is meant for educational purposes only and is not suggested as a replacement for traditional therapies or medications. As a matter of fact, we suggest to not believe any of this information, nor any of the information out there in the world. Remember, knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. Seek the wise. We are looking forward to continuing to provide this information through this platform, and if you are drawn to support us, you can do so by the following.
Sharing is caring. Share the podcast with like-minded individuals. Emotional responsibility and energetic wisdom can save the world. If you are drawn to support us monetarily, you can do so by visiting our patron page where you can make a monthly donation in exchange for exclusive Wise Wise perks. You can do this by visiting wise-wise.com slash patron, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Next, you can head over to Alexander's website where you can book private consultations in person, by phone, or on Skype. Find out more information on his live performances, class schedules, products, including birth chart analysis reports and music, and check out more information on his sound therapy tables. To do so, you can visit vibrotune.com, V-I-B-R-O-T-U-N-E.com. Finally, if you have been searching your entire life for consciously created apparel featuring the WiseWise logo apparel, Alexander themed clothing, or other alternative perspective designs, you can head over to Verity's Apparel, where you can find all that and more. That is veritiesapparel.com, V-E-R-I-T-E-E-S-A-P-P-A-R-E-L.com. We want to thank you for being part of this journey.